So next up we've got MOSFETs. Uh, MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. Uh, same joke as last time, the T stands for transistor, but usually people say MOSFET transistor, which is of course redundant, um, and you get the speech from last time. The most important thing to know about MOSFETs is they are voltage controlled devices, which makes them really easy to use. Um, you turn them on with any voltage that's above 2.2 technically, uh, so most people turn them on with 5, uh, turn them off with 0. Um, that is really nice because that's what the pick gives you already. Um, so there is no, no sizing. Um, you just connect it straight to a pick and that's it, right? Um, they often are slightly more expensive. Um, the ones we'll use are quite a bit more expensive because um, our MOSFETs are good to like 2 amps, uh, whereas our NPMs are good to like you know, 200 milliamps, right? Um, so our particular MOSFETs uh, will be more like two bucks. Um, but they are just so easy to use that sometimes it's well worth that two dollars, right? Uh, so just to kind of draw a real world example here. Um, so the source is always grounded, so they have different names than what the NPN had. Yeah, 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 I get it. Um, microcontroller will just have a direct connection, which is the part that I love. Um, and then, you know, let's say we were controlling, we may as well just overkill this thing, um, an LED, right? So it's got, uh, the power is going to whatever the load is, um, and then the load connects to the drain. Um, so you can see how the, the gate is very similar to the base, the emitter and source are very similar, and the drain and collector are very similar. Uh, different words, sorry, that's just <laughs> how it is, um, but very same concepts. Uh, so let's go ahead and let you see if you can complete this picture. Uh, so go ahead and take a minute and see if you can um, figure out how to connect this. All right, yeah, it's a trick question. Um, it's uh, there's no there's no sizing, right? So I mean, you just you connect it. It's a wire, so it was it was intentionally a trick question. There's no sizing. Um, that they're just so easy to use. Uh, the ones that we'll use. Uh, we'll use one called an IRLZ34N. Um, they will come in a package that looks like this, uh, so they're big, you can hold them in your hand. They actually will say um, something on the front. Um, they often get confused in our class with the 5 volt regulators because they look about the same. Um, so make sure if it says, you know, something like with the words 5V on it, that means it's a voltage regulator. Um, and if it says something different, uh, potentially this long big thing, um, then it's an in-channel MOSFET. The trouble with these numbers is they change so rapidly um, that I wouldn't count on it saying that number. It might. Um, so it might say 34 uh, on there. Um, but probably it won't say 5V is the best way you know it's a MOSFET. Um, same uh, deals before, there's a, a data sheet, it's available on the course website. I have no idea why, but data sheets with MOSFETs hate to put the letters gate drain and source. Um, I find it so annoying. It's like almost hard to find a data sheet that labels the legs. Um, but it always goes gate drain source. Uh, so the way these connect is the gate is the one that goes straight to your microcontroller. Um, the drain is the interesting one, uh, so it will go to your load. Um, and then the source, which feels like it should be important, um, is actually just ground. Um, if you really want to know the details, it's because uh, current flow is actually holes moving um, and not electrons, but these are labeled in terms of electrons. Um, you don't care. Um, you just need to know how to, how to hook it up, and that's the way you hook it up. Just like before, uh, that's most of the story. 99% uh, of the time you will be using uh, what's called an in-channel MOSFET. Um, but maybe for some people's projects, they're gonna need to switch to the P-channel MOSFETs. Same deal as before. Uh, so before you grounded uh, the source um, and put your load on the drain, and then the load up here had to go to a power supply, the P-channels are the opposite. Um, so the source, it still goes to something boring. That's how I remember it in my head. The source is always to something boring. Um, and then the gate um, will go straight to a pick. And then the drain will be um, controlling your load. 
and in this one your load will be grounded. Um, so they work very different, they're kind of like the reverse. You would only use them as if for some reason you had to have a low side uh, load connection. Um, it does come up, but not for many people. Um, and they're pretty easy to use. Uh, the main problem people have is if you want one, you have to go buy it, um, which is not hard, but you don't just get them in your lab kit. Um, so if you wanted to, uh, to draw something here, um, you know, that's real, um, I don't think there's really much need for this. Uh, the drain, I'll connect an LED, uh, would go there, uh, and the source would go there. Uh, the one thing that's kind of a, a gotcha about these is um, in order to turn it on, um, you have to give it zero volts here. So it's kind of, well, it's backwards of the end channel MOSFETs, but you probably saw this coming um, if you remember how PNPs were backwards. Um, so the way you turn it off is to give it 5 volts. Uh, the limitation is there um, that this better be a 5 volt uh, P channel. If you wanted to do 12 volts, then you'll have to have an intermittent stage transistor. Um, not going to get into that, um, but it works out quite nicely if it's a 5 up there. So most people won't use them, uh, but I wanted to at least tell you about them. Uh, that's it for MOSFETs. They're so easy that I couldn't really make a long video lecture if I tried. Alright, see you next time where we'll talk about some other transistors.